Hey, Sky King here, and for today's quick tips with Sky King, I'm going to show you how to make parallax textures and complex parallax textures. Okay, let's get into it. So what we're looking at here is field grass O2, and we're going to make a parallax texture of it. I like complex parallax for meshes like dirt cliffs, architecture, clutter, etc. For landscapes, I like just parallax because landscape can only use just parallax. It doesn't use complex parallax textures. It can't read it. And then just use terrain parallax blending fix mod to fix the alpha seams issue. Um, when you use parallax, if the texture has an alpha like we do here, you have to remove the alpha to put in the parallax texture there. So you're getting rid of any benefits that the alpha map gives you. And that's what terrain parallax blending fix fixes. So just kind of remember that you need terrain parallax blending fix for landscape parallax. Let's move on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this alpha channel and just create a new one. And let's start prepping this texture to turn it into a parallax texture. I will duplicate it so I have a copy of my source. I like to control shift and U to desaturate. Control L for levels to just tighten things up pulls a little bit more detail out and it helps material um, it helps materialize create a better uh, displacement texture next I'm going to just go into my brightness and contrast and just brighten it up a little bit again to just kind of pull out a little bit more detail okay now let's go ahead and save this as a PNG so I'm going to save as a copy to my desktop as a PNG PNG is lossless, so you're not going to add any more noise or anything to this image and kind of keep it clean. Here in Materialize, I will open up the Diffuse and hit Field Grass O2. Materialize is free and it creates textures based off of an image, in this case a texture. Under Height Map, I'm going to hit Create again and choose Displace. You can boost the contrast a little bit, but I would suggest not boosting it too much or you will start getting very wonky um, displacement maps. So I kind of just keep it at 1.5. I'm going to set that as the height map, click PNG under saving options and then hit the S for saving. And I'm just going to save over the original PNG file. There we are here. I am now going to just delete this layer because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to drag over our displacement map. In here we're going to prep it just a little bit. In our histogram, which you can find under window and histogram, we want to have a narrow band or you could have distortion in your parallax texture, uh, especially wrapping around corners of meshes, uh, just a whole bunch of things. Another thing to keep in mind is the mean average. You want it at 128. Anything above 128 uh, pushes things out of the landscape. Anything under 128 pushes it into the landscape. And if your whole texture is above or below 128, you can cause weird seams and weird distortion issues. So shoot for a mean average of 128. Um, and experiment, experiment, experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a narrow band to avoid any distortion. And I'm going to do that by hitting Control M on our curves. And I'm going to pull down the top right anchor about 25% and then I'm going to push up the bottom left anchor by about 25%. And you can see what we've done is we've reduced the contrast here. We've narrowed that band and we're still roughly around 128. So that makes me happy. If you need to adjust it, go to your adjustments, brightness, and then here you can adjust where you want it to go. Okay. I'm going to hit control A, then control C to copy that layer. Click the background, go to channels under alpha, control shift and V to paste in place. And now your parallax texture is done. To save it, I will click save, I'll overwrite. And we want to save this as a color plus alpha. BC7 fine and linear. Some people say BC3 or BC5 is good enough. It's not. Microsoft has said if you're using gradients or colors that are close with less contrast to use BC7, uh, since our displacement map is very narrow and doesn't have any contrast in its grayscale, you will get artifacting and distortion in your image itself. A lot of blockiness. So BC7 fine and linear is the best way to go. Make sure you're generating your mip maps and you're off to the races. Now let's go make a complex parallax texture. Here, 
Uh, we're using the Riverwood Blacksmith sign, which is all metal. That's cool. Makes things a little bit easier. I am only going to be working in the alpha, blue, green, and red channels. We're not going to worry about the diffuse texture. Uh, the complex parallax only works in RGB and alpha. You're putting a different texture in each of those channels. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and just create a parallax texture. So I'm going to just control shift and U. We'll brighten it up a little bit here just so we can get a little bit more detail out of it. And I am going to reduce the contrast on this again with our curves. Something like that will be fine um, because I don't need a lot of detail for this. We're doing like more larger objects and so forth. Uh, if you need to add anything, now's the time to do it. For instance, if you really wanted these holes to show up, you can kind of paint over things. You know, if it's a dark color, it'll push it down into the mesh. If it's a light color, it'll push it out of the mesh. This is fine enough for me. I'm going to save as a copy to the desktop as a PNG. Save that out. And here we're going to open it up. There's our sign we're going to create, and that is fine with me. Again, you can push things if you really want to. I kind of don't. Again, you can get some weird artifacting, but try it. Experiment. We're going to save as a height map, and we're going to hit the S button and just save over our previous image. Here is our diffuse, and I'm just going to pull that in. So here is our new displacement map. As you can see, it's already at 127, and we have a very narrow band, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna control A, control C, turn that off and click our base layer. I'm gonna go here to the alpha and just control shift V and paste over it. So our parallax in the alpha is done. Now red is gonna be your environment texture. Green is going to be your um, uh, gloss texture. And then blue is your metalness, which is very cool. Let's start with blue on the metalness. A lot of people will come in here and just paint one like a, a, a light gray. I use 175, 175, and 175, and it works really great. Um, one thing that I don't like about this is that you're kind of missing some opportunities of making a really cool texture. In this texture, there is a lot of um, dirt and grime. And what I would like to do is kind of retain that. I don't want the dirt and grime to be metal. I don't want the game to think it's metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint in, in a little square up here, my 175. And I'm gonna match the brightness of this image to that square. So I'm gonna do select inverse image adjustment brightness and just bring it up where they're pretty close. All right, and that's gonna be my metalness map. So where the dirt is and everything, it's not gonna be as reflective or metally, I guess you could say. Uh, our green channel, here uh, for red and green, I kind of make them much darker, like I would for a normal map gloss. For the, for the environment map, I'm just gonna kind of bring it down a little bit. I might add a little contrast here copy that and then in the green I'll do the same thing but since it's an all metal sign I'm going to bring the gloss up just a little bit maybe about 50% more here and that is going to be our complex parallax texture I know it looks funky you don't even have to worry about that again saving it we use the same settings color and alpha fine and linear now the next thing to remember is sometimes you just need an underscore P texture, which is just a standard parallax texture. Back here in field grass, it would literally just be the parallax texture and you would save it as such using color, just the color, no alpha, fine and linear BC7. This is it, okay? 
And so for if you're doing a complete texture pack, you would want to have the diffuse with the parallax and the alpha, the underscore P texture like we just made, and then for your complex parallax, you will save it and it will be underscore M. And then you save it just with the same settings, color, alpha, BC7, fine, linear. And also remember to auto-generate your MIP maps. Let's go check these out in game. Okay, here we are in game, and over here is our blacksmith sign. And the complex parallax is obviously working. We can get a little bit closer to it here. But you can see it's being pushed in. Everything looks right. And it's just reflective enough for me. You can definitely see some reflection here in the sign, which is just reflective enough for some old semi-corroded metal. I like that. Now let's go check out our grass. While we walk over to check our grass texture, I am creating another video where I am creating a new load order, and I'm trying to cover as much of Skyrim as I can with as few mods as possible. And it's a follow-up to my old video of modding Skyrim with 40 mods or less. And I am still holding to the rule of only 40 mods. Let me do this, uh, this is that game number two. <clears throat> and it's coming along really well. And I think, I'm, I think I've nailed it. So, um, Looking at a grass obviously has some displacement going on. It's not super accurate, but it is. it does hold true to the texture itself, which is nice. You can see the effect when you turn EMB on and off. And so that looks really good. Uh, what you're seeing here in my load order is 40 mods or less. And I think the game looks great with just so few mods. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you out. Uh, I look forward to seeing all of your parallax and complex parallax mods. Let me know what you're going to make, and I will check it out on the Nexus. Maybe I'll even put it in my load order. Guys, you have a great day. Thanks. Please like and leave me a comment. Let me know what you're going to be up to in Skyrim, what kind of mods you would like to see made, what kind of mods you're going to make, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.